Cleveland's West Side Market has been selling food and making fans for 100 years, longer than we've had refrigerators in our kitchens. Yet, it's still a thriving, award-winning marketplace. Most of the people wanted a live chicken because they wanted to save the head, the feet, and that to make their own soup. And the feathers, they'd make their pillows. So they'd tell them, I don't mind buying a chicken, but I want it alive. They said, sure. They wrap it up and they leave the head out. And when they go on a streetcar down the road, the chicken would go, San Francisco has its trolley cars. Cleveland has a West Side Market. My husband and I were dating, and he said, hey, let's go to the West Side Market. And I said, I've always wanted to go to the West Side Market. This was probably in the late 70s we went. It was a very fun experience because it reminded me so much of my grandmother and I start thinking what my grandmother had to do to go shopping two, three times a week. My grandmother was um, a very young widow. She was left with six children. Her house was rented. She only paid $5 a month and she had uh, no electricity, so she had a nice box. I call them the 100 stairs because when we'd go visit her, there were all these stairs behind her house and like they just went way up in the ceiling and I was never allowed up. Um, I'd try to go up two or three and my dad would go, get down here, get down here. I didn't know the stairs went to the West High Market. So every time I'm there, I, I think of my grandmother watching down on me. Well, shopping was a ritual that people used to have to do day in and day out because you could not buy large quantities of food haul them home in a car, and then stick them in refrigerators that are as big as a truck. So shopping was part of family life. It was something often that husbands and wives did together or that women and their children did together because you needed help carrying the bags and the parcels and you only bought enough for what you could use within the next couple of days, which made the market a very busy place. The market used to be the original grocery store. Everybody came to the market. Everybody shopped at the market. Everybody in the city knows about the market. It's my grocery store. It's where I do all my shopping. You know, it's so interesting. The market really represents a particular period in Cleveland history. And it was designed intentionally to be a grand building because of the vision primarily of Mayor Tom Johnson who was elected in 1901. He was a progressive. He believed that the city should serve all its citizens, not just the wealthy. And he had this idea that Cleveland, as it was becoming more modern, should be a model city for the whole country in the way that it served its population. Every customer that our town that come in, they always say, ask me, is this a train station? You know, like the first question they asked was the train station, and the second was it, was it built for the market? When the market was being designed by Hubble and Bennis, the architectural firm that was very highly thought of at the time, Cleveland was the seventh largest city in terms of population, and by the time the market was finished and opened in 1912, we were the sixth most populous city in the country. So Johnson had this idea that we were a city on the move, we were an important place, and he wanted a building that expressed our sense of civic pride and the fact that we were an industrial powerhouse on the rise. My first day of uh, opening, <laughs> I saw $9 all day. I went home and I cry. A lot of my competitors in the, when I first started the poultry, some were very accepting of me. They helped me with prices. And, you know, it's something you never forget. You know, the 
people that helped you come along, you know, that weren't intimidated by you being a competitor, that they actually helped you succeed. You have vendors that are carrying on a tradition in their family that goes back four generations. My family's history at the market started in 1934. My father's parents started the stand. So we are four generations because I'm third and my nephew is the fourth generation. You have vendors who bought the business from their bosses and they're the first ones in their family to have a stand at the West Side Market. When I started, I knew nothing about fish. The more I learned about seafood, the more fascinating it was. And I could bring a quality product to customers that they weren't able to find elsewhere. Oh, I think you can't underestimate what an important gathering place the market is. It's one of the few venues in all of the city where people from all walks of life, different neighborhoods, different economic levels, different social circles, rub shoulders and come together and they're all doing the same thing. It, it, they're all buying food. It's terribly, I don't know, I think it's, it's like democracy in action. Everybody's money is good. Everybody's engaged in the same activity and you get to see and hear and sometimes maybe even talk to people you would never have any interaction with at any other time. And you're all equal when you're schlepping bags at the West Side Market. When you're doing your shopping, you see somebody and say, hey, I didn't know you go here. And then you start talking. How's the kids doing? How's your wife? You know, nosy. It's changed in the same way that the face of Cleveland has changed. You had immigrants from certain countries in the early years, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Italy. In the 70s, you had people coming into Cleveland and so showing it up at the market from Southeast Asia. Now, Ohio City and Cleveland in general, the West Side, have lots of people coming from Latin America and you see those changes reflected again in the market, in who the vendors are, who the shoppers are, and even the food that's for sale. I mean, once you could, couldn't find a jalapeno pepper at the market, um, now they're there along with Cambodian spring rolls, and uh, uh, inside you can get Mexican tamales. It's all part of the, the changing, I guess, demographics create a changing foodscape and a, a changing social scene. It's not just about buying food, it's about relationships and it's about people. It's where people come to see each other. People come here on holidays and reminisce about when they were coming when they were little kids. There are only a handful of these markets in the entire country. And to have a building with the historic value that this one does and with, with with vendors that still operate the way that they did a hundred years ago is fantastic. No one else has an actual market like this. We've tried to keep this as traditional as possible. There are those who advocate for change and there are those who staunchly oppose change. But I think what will make the market last another hundred years is for it to continue to be exactly what it is, to be a place where people can come to buy food, not come to dine, not come as a tourist, not come to buy souvenirs, but to be authentically itself as it always has been. Everybody needs to eat. Some people do it fancy, some people do it simply, some people want to buy the most inexpensive food that they can, and the market serves those people. And I think as long as it stays true to its original purpose, the market has a very, very bright and promising future for another hundred years.